Hi everyone, my name is Perito Sierra, I'm a respiratory care educator at UC Davis Medical Center, and my colleague Anisha Pu, we will be presenting hands-on presentation on uh, mini VAR. Um, Non-bronchoscopic non bronchial via lavage or mini VAR is an um, invasive uh, procedure that we perform at UC Davis Medical Center. And adult, when we do this procedure, it has to be done in the intensive care units and also in the emergency department. If you have a patient who is trait and the patient is on the floors, we have to transfer the patient to the ICU for close monitoring and it has to be done in the intensive care settings. Uh, this procedure is performed by two competent RTs. It's a procedure that has to be done by two RTs. One is actually performing the mini VAL procedure and the second RT will be assisting with the procedure. The purpose of this um, um, mini VAL is according to the policy of procedure to obtain distant lung uh, specimen uh, for diagnosis of ventilator associated pneumonia. Uh, usually this procedure is done after the patient has been on the ventilator for 48 hours. If they are less than 48 hours, they usually prefer to do a um, tracheal aspirin. Uh, instead of doing a bronchoscopy and via the or a mini VAR. Um, indication, uh, as it says, uh, it has to be done in adult intensive care units. The algorithm below has been approved by the ICU committee for use in the adult intensive care units. And that algorithm is right here. It says respiratory culture algorithm. Patient on the vinegar grain for 48 hours. And the physician usually take care of this part. And also they add these numbers here, which is the areas of temperature, uh, blood count, tracheal secretions, oxygenation PFI to ratio, and come up with a number and they are the actual individuals that they actually do the ordering of the mini BAL. When they order the mini BAL, it will not show on the respiratory uh, care portion of the order. It will be under diagnostics and the lab section. And the RN will notify the RT as soon as they get the uh, uh, order from the physician. Usually this procedure has to be performed after it's ordered after two hours. It should not be longer than that and the uh, RN should uh, notify the uh, respiratory um, therapists. Um, if a uh, conscious collector for brink alveolar lavage is usually good for 72 hours. The pr this procedure should not be repeated less than 72 hours. Uh, the only time we can do the mini BL less than 72 hours if there is not sufficient uh, uh, um, specimen or a specimen is lost uh, in the lab. And also there is a clause that says if the physician, due to a change in the patient's condition, wishes to uh, send another uh, specimen less than 72 hours after a BAL, fellow or attending approval is needed. Uh, we usually should write by the fellow or attending in order to do another mini BAL less than 72 hours. Now we will come about the uh, relative contraindications. The relative contraindications are means that it has to be done, but uh, the physician uh, has to okay that the patient has to be at the bedside of the patient. Um, if I do greater than 90% or P greater than 14 centimeter water pressure, um, open external uh, ventricular uh, device EVD or ICPs greater than 20. The physician has to be at the bedside, severe COPD, uh, unstable hemodynamically, hypotension, hypertension, arrhythmias, and also uh, if the patient has a scheduled bronchoscopies. Another thing to remember always to uh, check also if the patient platelets. It's something if the patient is uh, bleeding, the platelets count has to be greater than 60,000 in order to do this procedure. You usually always Make sure although it's not under relative contraindications, but always a respiratory therapist. Just remember if there is um, um, uh, uh, the um, uh, platelets less than 60,000, or if the patient is actually coughing frank blood, you always will bring it to the physician's attention. Once the procedure is performed, there's also uh, we have some uh, precautions or possible complications because of doing the mini BL. Those are bradycardia, bronchospasm, vomiting, bleeding, pneumothorax, hypotension, and hypertension. That's the reason that a respiratory therapist has to uh, listen to the breath sounds before and also after the procedure. 
And it says NSS or vomiting, make sure when the patient is on the ventilator, uh, uh, please touch bases with the RN. That way, if the patient has episodes of coughing, to give him some sedation to su uh, suppress the cough. And also, make sure if they are on the feeding, then turn off the feeding at least 45 minutes to an hour before pre performing the procedure. Uh, when you do actually the procedure, then make sure before you do the procedure to turn uh, up your FIE2 to 100%, listen to the breath sounds, and also uh, section the patient before performing the actual maybe Once you're finished with the procedure, also make sure to go ahead and section the patient and then make changes on the vanilla FIE2 settings uh, based on the patient's saturation. Now at this time, I'd like to um, um, uh, let uh, Alicia Kuhl uh, talk about the uh, uh, menu Thank you, Farid. Um, so I'd like to talk about the products that are used to do the procedure. Uh, you would need to determine based on the size of your, your patient's ET tube uh, or trach, which, which of the two sizes uh, mini BAL that you'll be needing. In most cases, with a 7 0 ET tube or larger, you're going to be using um, item number 142, which is, you'll notice the packaging is a little bit larger. Uh, this is a 16 French outer diameter with a 12 French inner diameter catheter. It is a catheter within a catheter. Uh, if you've got a 7 0 ET tube or smaller, uh, or a tracheostomy, you would choose the smaller size mini BAL, which is item number 143. Again, the packaging is quite a bit smaller than the other, uh, and there's also an indication of the size here, 13 French powder diameter uh, on the smaller powder. So again, 7 0 or smaller, or a trach would be the smaller of the two. The other item that you're going to be needing for your procedure is the mini BAL prep pack or prep kit. This includes everything that you'll need to, to uh, complete the procedure, including saline, syringes, uh, the Lucan strap, uh, the adapters. Uh, everything that you need for the procedure is included in one of the two. So in this case, uh, our patient has a 70 ET tube, so I would then select the larger uh, mini BAL from my PHS cart and one of the apps. Again, Farid talked about the importance of um, having two RTs at the bedside. Uh, if you have orders uh, for this procedure, please call uh, another RT to assist you uh, at the bedside. Uh, so once we've double-checked all the contraindications, confirmed with the nurse, we've turned off all of the uh, feedings about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour prior to the procedure. Um, my patient is at 100% oxygen. Um, we've let the patient know that we're going to be doing the procedure and gathering a sample. Uh, we'll go ahead and get set up for the procedure. So I've gone ahead and opened up um, all of the packages, and I want to talk a little bit about what's in each side, so in each package. So in the prep pack, um, you'll notice that all the contents is out. So what I've got is um, two empty syringes. Uh, I've got two full vials of saline, so I'll have more than enough saline uh, to do my lavage. Uh, I've got a Lucan's trap, which will be attaching to wall section directly, and then the sample will come directly through the catheter into the trap, which we then will label and send off to the lab. Uh, if you, at the end of the procedure, if you prefer not to cap your, your sample, uh, you have an option of actually taking off the adapter and capping it this way. Uh, and then the other item, of course, is your, your, um, your sharp or your needle for your syringe to draw for saline. Uh, we also provide you uh, with a um, white cover or a, uh, a sterile cover. So while you're doing the procedure, you would, of course, cover the patient. Okay. Um, the next package, of course, I've selected uh, the proper size for the procedure. And I want to talk a little bit about what's included inside of this package. Um, you'll notice that the catheter itself uh, has depth markings and um, these are going to be important so that when you go to do the procedure, because this is a completely blind procedure, um, we need to know, we need to line up the numbers on the valve calf with the numbers on the ET tube and that tells us again where we are during the procedure, when we get to the end of the ET tube and then we'll move on past that position to a wedge. Um, you'll also notice that at the end of the bowel calf, there is a protective cover or a cap. 
Um, really, that has two purposes. One is to maintain uh, the coude of the catheter, which you'll notice has a natural curve. Uh, so you have the ability to do either a right or a left sample. Uh, you'll also notice uh, that there is a very soft mushroom atraumatic tip. Uh, so that when we get out into that, um, the distal airway, we want to be in a wedge position where we're gathering our sample, that this mushroom tip uh, is not going to cause damage or a pneumothorax. Uh, moving up the catheter, uh, there is a, uh, this is actually a supplemental oxygen port. Uh, and you'll notice um, that the port is on the same side as the coude of the catheter. So again, because this is a completely blind procedure, when your catheter is in the airways, this gives you a nice visual outside of the patient of which direction your coude is turning. And then at the end here, we provide you with a three-way stop cock. So again, when we set up, you'll have the ability to have saline in line uh, for your saline, saline lavage or your delivery of saline, as well as your, um, your suction will be attached. A couple of other items that are important in the package. Uh, we provide you with a Christmas tree adapter, again, connected to your uh, three-way stopcock. You will need that. Uh, and then the only other item that you'll need is your ET tube adapter. So some of you know this uh, more commonly known as a Bodai adapter. So this allows you to connect directly to the ET tube um, for your entrance with your catheter. The other items that are included here uh, are not needed for this procedure at UC Davis, uh, so you can go ahead and just discard of those, two, of those three items that are left over. Uh, before we get started, I want to give you a really good visual of where it is in the patient that we are uh, trying to go with this, with this procedure. So you'll notice um, inside of my patient here that if I was to remove um, this, I've got the end of my ET tube here. Uh, the carina in, the, in this case here, and then I have the option again to go to the right or the left. Really the idea with this procedure is that we want to get as distal as we possibly can out into the airways. So I will show you the measurements, I'll show you how to get to this position, but when we're doing our sample, uh, we would really like our catheter tip to be out here as distal as possible into a wedge. Again, remember that the, uh, the pneumonia or the bug is not here in the trachea or in the ET tube, it's actually out in the airways. So that's what we're, um, we are doing with this procedure. Okay. okay, so we're all set to start the procedure. Uh, so I will demonstrate how we set up all of the parts and pieces to make this work. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is preload uh, my uh, valve cath into the ET tube adapter and I like to preload it uh, about an inch and a half past. So that uh, prevents me from getting hung up on the ET tube when I feed it through. The next thing I will do is attach my Christmas tree adapter to the um, three-way stopcock, which then attaches to my Lucas trap. And then we will attach our wall suction. Making sure that my three-way stopcock is in the off position to suction so that when I attach my saline to the three-way stopcock, the, su the suction does not draw the saline out of my syringe. And the last part is, again, I've preloaded my 50 ml syringes. I've got two of them preloaded here, ready to go. So the first one will attach to the last remaining port of the three-way stopcock, like so. Alright, at this point I'm going to, uh, Farid is going to disconnect the patient from the ventilator uh, and we are going to attach the bell cap to the ET tube adapter and then reattach the ballard at the bottom. So at this time uh, my patient is still being ventilated and I have a straight shot down the ET tube with my bell cap. So the uh, first motion is going to be uh, to advance my outer catheter on the valve path uh, by looking at the number on the ET tube and matching up the number on my valve path. And what that number, those two numbers matching will do will be to get me to the position where I need to be to start the procedure, which is right at the end of the ET tube. So in this case, uh, the number that I'm shooting for is number 27. So I'm going to go ahead and advance. Until 
still the 27 snapshot. And with both of those numbers matched up visually there, again, because this is a blind procedure, you can see that the tip of my bell calf is right at the end of my ET tube. So that's my first indication of the positioning of where I want to be. At this point, I want to go ahead and instill um, two to four centimeter, excuse me, two to four mLs of saline. Um, and this really is just to, to give a nice clean flush so that anything that we might have picked up on the way down the ET tube will be pushed out and clean for our sample. So I've got my three-way stop clock. Suction is off, which means that saline is on. So I'm going to go ahead and just give a little quick flush. Okay. At this time, now I want, what I want to do is either take the direction to the right or to the left, uh, depending on physician's orders. And I want to advance my catheter four to six centimeters past the end of the ET tube. Again, the outer catheter has been advanced. So my inner catheter has not been uh, advanced at all. And what you can see uh, visibly here is that at this position, four to six past the end of the ET tube, we are past the carina and out into the distal airway. From this position, what I want to do is um, advance my inner catheter. The inner catheter, again, going out into the distal airway as distally as possible which is where we're going to be doing our installation of saline. So you'll notice that now that I'm advancing the inner catheter, it is advanced out, passed out of the outer catheter. The position that I want to be in, again, as distally as possible, um, is uh, where, I, where I will feel a wedge. Uh, so again, because it is blind, really all you can do is just advance that inner catheter until you feel resistance. Once you feel resistance, to determine that you're not in a bifurcation, so again, we want to be here. If, for, if we feel resistance and we're in this position, the best, way to, best thing to do is just to simply pull back the catheter and then advance a little bit farther to make sure that you feel resistance. At this point, uh, we're in the position that we want to be in the airways, and this is where we begin our lavage and installation of saline. So I've got suction is in the off position. I'm going to go ahead and give aliquots of 20. So I've given 20, turn my stop cocks to saline off, and my suction is on. Uh, at this time, we haven't received any, any sample yet, so I'm going to instill 20 more. So suction off. Give an additional 20, and then saline off, suction on. By this time, you should have more than enough sample uh, collected here in your specimen jar. Once we both agree and we determine that we have the uh, adequate sample for the lab, uh, we're going to go ahead and terminate the procedure by simply just pulling the catheter out. When you're pulling the catheter out, you want to be, be careful not to pull it completely out um, to keep that catheter tip protected here in the adapter. So once I see the adapter tip is here in the, in the uh, excuse me, once I see the bow cath tip is in the adapter visibly, I can go ahead then and disconnect and Fareed will reconnect my patient to the ventilator. And once this procedure is done, we can go ahead and suction the ET tube listen to the breath sounds, and once we got the specimen, we label the specimen, the disconnect here. Thank you. We'll go ahead and close. And we put the label around it, and we put the first bag clean, and the second bag has the ice, and that bag goes to the ice here, and we'll send it to the lab. And uh, if you have patients, uh, they are trained and you want to do the mini bell, uh, it's also a blind procedure. You will not give them much sedation. It'd be a very quick procedure. You usually want the mini bell to be around 16 to 18 uh, centimeters here at the half of your um, uh, inner cannula. If a patient comes in from sniff, you take their inner cannula, which is dirty, throw them away, put a new one in, then you go ahead and do the mini bell procedure. If you have it on 16 to 18, you will be in the right lower lobe uh, um, uh, and be able to uh, retrieve the specimen. Thank you.